day in and day out on the IT help desk. Every time you put the phone down before you can even catch your breath, you got another call coming in. And I know exactly what that feels like because my first job when I began my tech career was on the IT help desk. Sure, I was grateful for that position, but I knew real quick this was not a job that I wanted to keep long term. I had to search for something better. And chances are, if you're on an IT help desk right now, or you're considering going on an IT help desk before long, you're going to have the same feeling. You need to get out of here. And that's why in this video, we're going to talk about how you can escape that IT help desk and start on a path towards an AWS cloud role. If you're new here, I'm Greg, the creator of Thoughtful Techie Cloud. And each week, I create a video to help you navigate your AWS cloud and tech journey. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe right now. Now, in all honesty, when you transition to an AWS cloud role, you're going to need to bring some fundamental level of tech knowledge into that so that you can build upon that. If you're already on an IT help desk, I'm assuming you might have some technical skills already that you can serve as the foundation to then layer on your AWS studies. If you don't have much of a technical foundation, we need to evaluate where your gaps are. For any cloud role, it's great to have fundamental understanding of compute, database, network, storage, and security at a minimum. And it's an added bonus if you're familiar with software development and coding. Now, you don't need to be a full-fledged software engineer, but some coding and scripting helps out. If you have gaps in these areas, there's a number of different ways you can address it. If you're not really familiar with operating systems and hardware, you could take a look at CompTIA A+. Now, you don't necessarily need to go out here and get the certification unless the job you're looking for requires it, but I would say at a minimum, have that equivalent level of knowledge, whether you decide to get the certification or not, at least have that knowledge. It's also helpful to have some networking knowledge as well, because that's gonna help you with troubleshooting and understanding eventually how to either support or architect a solution in the AWS cloud. Now, coming from your IT help desk background, it's interesting to be able to understand what are some roles that would be a natural fit for you to evolve into. And one of those options could be a cloud support engineer. Now, you're already on an IT help desk, so you've built up great customer service skills. You're picking up phones. You're probably familiar with an IT help desk ticketing system. So that's all familiar. Well, when you focus on the cloud support engineer role, you would still kind of be taking those inbound calls or either working in a help desk queue, except now the problems that you're solving are going to be cloud-based. In, in order to be able to solve those cloud-based problems to help your customers achieve their business outcomes, now you have to build up that supporting cloud knowledge. Beyond the cloud support engineer role, something else you could also consider as a next step beyond that is a technical account manager role. So a technical account manager role is more customer facing. So you're not necessarily just sitting at a help desk, picking up calls and working off of tickets. Now you have your own customers that you're working with directly and you're helping them making sure that their architecture is running smooth and they're operationally excellent. The technical account manager role is more advanced than the cloud support engineer role. So it would be very rare that I would suggest to you if you're in a help desk position now that you could jump all the way to the technical account manager. That's a real big jump. So I would suggest start somewhere like the cloud support engineer role, get strong in that area, and then pursue potentially that technical account manager role in the future. Now, let's say if you were gonna go with an AWS support engineer role, what you would typically do is you would focus on one domain or one area of AWS and then become really good at that. For example, could be EC2, could be networking, could be databases. So day in and day out, that's gonna be your specialty. You're gonna get really good with that. And then that is going to be a really great foundation for your future cloud roles. Now, by now, let's say you have built your IT fundamental skills. It's time to focus on AWS skills. There are many different things you can do. Everybody's situation is different. It really depends on 
what skills you're already bringing into the table, what experience you have, what hands-on skills have you built, and then we can take what you have and then build on that further. Bare minimum, AWS cloud knowledge would be AWS certified cloud practitioner. That's a fundamental certification that teaches you AWS fundamentals. You cover things like uh, value proposition of AWS. You cover things like compute, network, storage, database, security, a little bit of AI and ML billing, support, and AWS cloud concepts and technologies. After you've gotten your AWS certified cloud practitioner, the next best step is the AWS Solution Architect Associate Certification. This is one of my favorite AWS certifications because a lot of the conversations and interactions that you start with are gonna require at least this level of knowledge to be able to understand what it is you're trying to solve and define. During your Solution Architect Associate Prep, you're definitely going to wanna to build hands-on skills as well. One of the learning platforms I think you're gonna get a lot of benefit from is AWS Skill Builder. And one of the main reasons I like AWS Skill Builder is because it's like a one-stop shop. It's a place where you can learn the theory, gain hands-on skills, through builder labs, as well as take practice exams all within the same platform. I would say that these certifications and the associated knowledge that you gain getting those certifications is the minimum knowledge that you need to have a successful beginning in an entry level cloud role. There are some additional cloud roles that I think you'll be interested in, but these are gonna be a little bit more towards intermediate to advanced. One of those is Solution Architect. This is what I do now. Another one is Cloud Engineer. And a third would be DevOps Engineer. These are also great roles. Let me know down in the comments below if you'd like me to make more videos talking about these roles and going more in depth. But for now, you have your work cut out for you. If you're excited and you're ready to get started, check the links down in the description below. I've got some resources for your AWS Cloud Practitioner as well as the AWS Solution Architect Associate, where you can get started right now. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.